Thank you, everyone. Thanks for, uh, thanks for joining us for the session today uh, on accelerated cost savings with API management. Um, hopefully, everyone has had lunch uh, and caffeine. Uh, although it is an exciting topic, um, you know, I'm grateful for everyone who's joined us here live in, uh, in San Francisco. Um, so today, I'll, I'll talk to you briefly about um, not just accelerated cost saving, but also an increase in innovation, um, that increase in uh, speed of innovation that comes with looking at APIs more as products than as an individual technology itself. Um, my name is Neil Swart. I run outbound product management for Apogee here at Google. And, and my path to API started way, way back on network infrastructure, then went to security, application security, finding holes in various places in infrastructure and APIs, and ultimately led me here to, to Apogee here at Google. Um, and in today's session, we'll also talk about business. So not just purely the technical underneath it, but the lives and uh, the technology at the top. Um, there's one question, my timer's not running, which means I can hold you here longer, <laughs> I guess. They're doing it, cool. I, I snuck in a few extra minutes. Um, so on the business side, I think what we hear our customers talk about a lot is that ideally the fastest path that they can think of, we would help them with. And that is to get their ideas and their company value as quickly in the hands of customers as possible. And ideally that's a straight line. It's a straight line into a product and from there directly in the hands of customers. But as we all know, it's not quite that simple, and certainly not when uh, customers are, are you know, changing how they want to buy from you, what they want to buy from you, how much they want to pay for it, et cetera. Now, it's within, within that context of getting value as quickly as possible to customers, um, as we'll see in the presentation, APIs play a very important role. But to start off first, like why is that role so important? It's because the reality of working towards this goal of getting your services and products and value to customers digitally, that they're faced with a multitude of not so straight lines. It's a very easy path to, to get from idea to, you know, to another idea, but how do you get to execution? Um, and specifically this digital journey for organizations that aren't the size of Google or that aren't the size of you know, 500, 1,000, 10,000 people, um, those organizations tend to, uh, to run into a couple of challenges and this is just but one small piece of it. So firstly, in order to develop any of these di digital solutions, um, there's the actual development cost itself. Like what do you, or how many developers do you have, and what is it they spend most of their time on? So there's a challenge on optimizing the velocity for developers. On the other side, there's um, the risk of now you've developed something, customers show up and start using it in massive quantities. There's the hockey stick effect that might happen. In other words, now there's attention you have to spend on not just setting up the infrastructure once, but supporting it throughout this peak of usage or even the reverse, and that is cost optimized for those cases where you're not using it. All the way through to how do we secure this plethora of decisions that led to you creating a product and delivering it to customers, maybe not just within your region, but making your business available to elsewhere in the world. And then lastly, but certainly not the least, at the end of the day, you're using technology and building APIs to get to this outcome. Let's get the value from the customer transformed into margin and revenue monetization for you. So the starting point of this presentation is like, look, there is a plethora of um, challenges along the way to get to this digital, uh, digital means of communicating with your customers. Um, and some of these uh, patterns have repeated itself, and that's led us to create a set of helpful technologies uh, that ultimately aim to solve some of these problems. How do we get customers value from your organization faster? And three of the top questions that, that come into mind with customers is, um, is not just sort of how much new technology are we using, how much of Google's keynote are you using in your infrastructure, but do I know that I, I have the best infrastructure for my purpose? Am I using the right things out of all the possibilities that we have? Are we spending like, enough? Are we spending too much? Could we optimize our costs? Could we lower our, our monthly bill? Um, or could we utilize and swap out entire technologies so that certain developers no longer have to focus on infrastructure, no longer have to focus on repeating themselves, and instead focus on business logic on top? And then lastly, across all of this, security is often seen as a tax that is applied at the end but we're looking at this as, look, it's not just security for security's sake, it's how do we make sure the data of your customers and your intellectual property is kept safe, 
but also the system so that you don't inadvertently spend tons of money on, for instance, API calls that end up nowhere. So while these questions are not unique to APIs, it is a big challenge for mid-sized organizations and above uh, to solve for some of this. And I'm here to say, as an advocate for APIs, that the good news, too, is that APIs themselves offer a way for you to get all those outcomes. That is to say, APIs power the majority of um, the digital interactions that are out there today and have done so for decades. Um, but they're also a key area for further optimization. Um, and one of the biggest things that mid-sized organizations or even earlier stage companies have is not can you build something, but are you building the right thing for your end customer? Um, a large chunk, probably more than two thirds of the Silicon Valley investments that go into companies end up in awesome products, but no one's using them. So investing the right way, but also in the right ideas and iterating fast is one part of where we want to go. And we've seen that companies that start utilizing um, an approach that favors looking at an API as a product, we see that they're getting better results, both on optimizing, but also finding the right product to build. And in general, over the course of about 12 months measured, um, these companies that have taken a strategic approach to APIs end up generating more of them, which, you know, self-serving is obviously beneficial to, to us. But for APIs in particular, um, and all of the ideas that you can help unlock, there are sets of other uh, strategies at play too. And we've captured all of those, um, those strategies and all those capabilities in a set, of, um, a set of services that no longer is just available to the largest companies out there, but is available from whatever usage you have, from the first API call you have up to the billions that you have. Um, and this is sort of the area of API management. You've heard of it as API management or full lifecycle API management. Um, but the case in point is that an API represents a contract. It's the contract, it's the delineation between your group in the organization that builds sets of business logic and a partner or a business unit or you know, an ecosystem uh, developer that ends up wanting to use your infrastructure. And I, and I call it a contract for a very specific reason. It's an agreement between you and the other party to not change that portion of your functionality. If you've done so, you can iterate more quickly on the back end um, faster using technologies such as the ones we're talking about here. And it's important to note that it's for, for any use case, um, quite literally. It could start off with simple integration use cases all the way through to developer ecosystems that end up in multiple digital portals uh, of various kinds where new modes of communication are taken care of. At the end of the day, they're all API calls and they all represent similar value but also similar challenges. And it's this any scale that we mentioned in particular in the current economic climate to say, look, you shouldn't just have to lock yourself into massively long contracts, but utilize exactly what you need and no more and spin down as you, as you no longer need it. The other side of this uh, from a cost optimization perspective is that oftentimes when you pick a technology or you decide to, a strategy around APIs as products, all of a sudden additional constra constraints and concerns show up from a security perspective. This is not just the basic, you know, am I authenticating the right person or the right system? Am I authorizing them the right thing? But also, what type of attacks do I need to defend against? What do I not know yet from an attacks perspective? What is all this new technology like Gen AI going to do with the consumption of these APIs? So there's an entire class of problems in the security space that tended to mean you have to have a separate set of tools or a separate department for it. Um, but we believe that that's not necessarily the case. You, do, you shouldn't have to do that. And then lastly, for every developer, we, we strongly believe that some of this technology should be available not just to a specific size company, for all of them, but also um, enable the use of these APIs for any type of developer, whether or not you're sort of a hardcore, directly into the weeds uh, developer or someone who uh, prefers sort of more visual tools, more low-code tools. So for us, APIs, um, we're not just part of how we got to where we are, but we also think it's a fundamental uh, enabler, this contract and this product for new technology in the future. And there are a couple of different areas for further maximizing value of these APIs. Like, how do we do more with it? It's great that there's technology, but at the end, we want to get uh, as much value out of it as, pos as possible. There's sort of three different categories that we look at here, including some interesting announcements. So one part of this is, 
at the end of the day, you can stand on the shoulders of someone else when you utilize someone's API. So how do you get your ideas faster to life, faster to your end customers or the potential end customers, and standardize that access uh, and reduce the need for specialized skills for them to take make use of this back, uh, back-end service? The middle section of this, do more with less. Um, I run part of product management, and I'm always told by our engineering team, like, that's great, you want 100 things done, but in reality, we're only gonna fund 10 of those. Um, how would you apply that same prioritization mechanism to your own business by just carefully selecting where you um, invest and where you reuse? And then lastly, we talked a little bit about the security side. There's much to be said on that topic. We have some separate sessions for that that are recorded um, and made available just to look at how we bring more security capabilities in the hands of the people who want to build APIs but aren't necessarily security experts. How do you not burden your teams with the security overhead? So with that in mind, let's start with the build faster. How do we get, um, how do we get your ideas encapsulated into reality faster uh, by utilizing APIs? So one part um, of what we've announced and we're announcing here at Google Next is, is this notion of helping people go from, from a, let's call it a, a novice API idea to something that is an expertly crafted API specification that could almost instantaneously be utilized as an API's product. And what I'm, I'm showing you to here on screen is, is Duet AI cooperating with Apigee to help craft API specifications and ultimately deploy this inside of Apigee. Again, the goal here is to help those developers that want to focus most of their attention on something else, but have to make sure that this uh, service is made reusable for others, made discoverable. And part of what we're doing here is um, enabling an IDE experience where certain prompts are put in, like accept purchase orders for specialized coffee beans through a web API. The very first part of this is uh, that we take you know, general understanding of what API specifications are and help suggest the specialized statements that go in there. Now, at certain scale, um, once you started using this, what becomes interesting is that these specifications that are offered um, will start to be made better based on other specifications that it has access to. So specifically for mid-sized organizations, assume that you have a catalog of all APIs, that becomes input to train, in this case, the model to help your teams be more effective, get to API specifications that are built with this idea of product first uh, in mind and get to ideas faster. What we're announcing later here in the next two is that there's a trusted tester program that you can, uh, you can apply for at the end of the slides. But this is one of many places where we think that we can accelerate the development of those ideas into value to your customers um, by making use of technology. Again, not technology for technology's sake, but for an end goal. Another part of this, too, is to make the technology fit into more of the use cases that you might have. And without draining the entire slide, um, at the end of the day, an API gets processed somewhere before it's fed to multiple different backends. And one part of this is what we call the runtime that takes care of all the functions that we briefly spoke about. And one of the developments in this area is to uh, make it possible to load a set of policies across all the APIs you have. We'll call that standard API proxy. And that could be used as a starting point to just put up a facade in front of a new service that a team has been building without really bothering too much about what the ecosystem is that you're building around it. And then contrasting that with uh, what we call an extensible API proxy, which is essentially soup to nuts, everything that um, everyone knows about API management, detailed policies, authentication, authorization, transformations, um, ecosystem management, developer management, et cetera. Now, the reason I just even touched this here is that the, the tooling that is now available allows your organization to move fast while already standardizing on, um, on the technology that will be helpful to monitor and ultimately monetize these APIs uh, and the protection, of course, as well. And on that note, um, another part of, um, of the overall offering that we think is really relevant for mid-sized companies and above, um, and even smaller companies, uh, is this notion of being able to start off with an API, again, generated, for instance, with Duet AI, and then fast iteration in the back end using what we call application integration. Um, the notion here is that humans, by definition, want to optimize for their own time, and we agree, we want to do the same thing. 
And what we've noticed is that um, workflows and integrations typically tend to follow a number of fixed patterns that always start off with a trigger on the left-hand side, most of the time as an API call, a set of data transformations, a set of conditions that are brought in, and ultimately a set of connectors to either drop in or fetch additional data. That entire um, sort of suite of functionality is being rewritten hundreds of thousands of times. And instead of doing so, um, what we're suggesting here is take this approach of uh, projecting value to customers through an API, turning that into a contract, that doesn't change for your partners or for your, um, your development partners, and at the back end, iterate super fast on what that workflow can look like. And once you've settled on something that's of value for your end customers, then you can further optimize and maybe further enhance it. And that's what, um, in this case, a visual path of helping you iterate faster in these integrations. So all of that, the main intention is bring ideas to market faster, because that's one of the big differentiators that you, you have by utilizing technology. Again, not technology for technology's sake, but for a particular purpose. The other section, uh, or the other big area where we think there's more optimization possible, maximizing value, is to look at, well, how do we take what was originally true for large organizations and slice and dice it down to a set of usage patterns that fit your organization? And without going into details of the commercials, one of the things we've noticed is that these technologies that are available for APIs, we'd like I'd like to follow the model of exploring your ideas first, trial it when, with what we have, um, and then matching it with either a short-term contract, literally whatever you use is, ends up being paid for, or um, go for longer-term fixed cost setups with subscriptions. The only reason I bring this up again is to show you that this is not just technology available for large organizations, um, it is in fact very helpful for, uh, for smaller teams and smaller organizations too. The other big advance in this area is to say, well, that's great, we have technology, we have an API management platform, we have something like a product, but how am I going to make my case for other parts of the organization, or how am I going to help other teams do work for me as the API developer in this case? And one thing we've noticed is that um, oftentimes a lot of the analytics data from APIs, the behavior of certain clients, uh, certain applications that come in, or um, the relevancy of the developer program, like how many people have um, you know, active developer tokens for APIs, that type of technical information is not just relevant for, uh, for the teams that run the platform, but also for teams that are on the business side, who know more perhaps of the financial transaction that happens. The, you know, the, the rate at which people complete purchases, um, the reports that have to be generated around costs, the reports that, um, that various folks up in the tree want to have. And one of the things we've done is, like, rather than having you create further integrations, why don't we just create a capability that all the data that pertains to these APIs is made available in a business intelligence platform, in this case, Looker Data Studio. And with that, immediately an entire host of reporting questions and data analytics questions is moved away from the hard, harder core technology of API management into the realm of pure data intelligence. So we bring API information that's in Apigee, we bring that over into Looker for intelligence, we also do that in a cost-effective way by not just copying a bunch of stuff, um, make it available as a data source, and then either come up with standard dashboards or use AI inside Looker to ask natural language questions about data sets about how the joining of two or three or five data sources ends up with a result for this API program or this type of action that's taken. So with that, we're bridging between the various technologies that are there and we're doing it without turning that into your problem. Um, and we think that's sort of a pattern that we're, we're trying to get to. And then lastly, on sort of maximizing value, this is only so good to the moment that you can trust it. And the trust factor here is, is critically important, we think. Um, and it's important because it's all your data. It's a new entry point in your organization. And what we've done there, um, and we'll keep doing, is riding along with everything else that the larger Google organization has made available and is announcing here in, um, in Google Next as well. And that is conceptually to take the information we already have about these APIs, about the, the ecosystems that you've created, the transactions that pass through, take that analytics data and unleash sort of security models on top of it. 
So not just look at policies that are created, but also the activity on these APIs. What is anomalous behavior from a pure API perspective? That's what analytics offers today. What do we want to add on top of it? It's things like bot detection, like who is scraping our data? Who is going off with all the, you know, the purchasing behavior that you have, or the entire price list catalog you have, or is um, you know, maliciously impacting marketing numbers based on fake requests that come in? So all of this all rides on the same information. In the past world, it meant that all this information had to be given to a security department, expensive enough. So what we're doing here is we're bringing those security capabilities to the API management platform, and in this case, riding along with what's already collected, running models against it, models against the traffic, uh, and it's the same machine learning models that are utilized for larger Google properties uh, in the outside world, um, continuously recognize uh, activities that don't really fit well with the normal behavior. And obviously identifying it is great, but if I tell you there are a thousand things wrong, you clearly want to know the next step, which is what are you going to do about it? And that's where a set of mitigating actions can be taken by the same API platform. Again, it doesn't matter if you go, you know, the, the, you're, you only have a few APIs or you've got billions of API calls, uh, the same capabilities exist and are made available. And in this case, mitigation can mean many things. It can mean, look, we don't want to actually receive this traffic whatsoever. Or we want a signal to your business logic in the back end, this looks kind of funky. We've received it from a certain geography, we've seen certain behavior that makes us think that this is not really legit, legitimate traffic, but we don't know enough yet. We want you to make a next uh, call. And it might be that you know, you're, um, you're not going to give uh, this particular product to someone else, or you know, you'll do some extra fraud checks in the back end. The key though is that the problem of securing these APIs becomes a collaboration between your team, in this case, uh, us in Apogee, and your security organizations. And the context is shared between the two. And this at the end of the day all leads us to, um, to a set of main questions. That is, do we have a way to look at APIs not just as technology, but as a way to unlock um, and to explore new and open new use cases for end customers. Um, and we think the answer to that is, is absolutely true. Yes, we see many of our customers generate new revenue streams on the basis of uh, creating APIs. And they firstly started off with using APIs purely as integration technology and started moving in the direction of more ecosystems, um, creating adjacencies by integrating with partners that are adjacent to them. Um, creating net new uh, entry points for new customers, all the way through to uh, all the way through to capabilities um, that allow you to engage with newer styles developers um, that work in entirely different fashions. So APIs really are the front door to every digital asset that you have in an organization. And one particular example uh, of a company that's gone through this journey with us and is still on this journey is, is a company called L'Oreal. Uh, everyone knows them, large beauty brand. <laughs> Um, but what's fascinating to take away from, from this particular example is that they moved from the origins of APIs as purely means to get faster communication between disparate parts of the organization um, to sharing more services um, with other groups. In other words, promoting reuse, reducing costs by bearing the costs across multiple business units, all the way through to new capabilities in APIs as products that are created by engaging developers, um, marketing organizations, with the product sets that they have through digital means. And again, this is a multifaceted, not just purely one API technology, um, but the starting point is an API is a product, turns into a contract where the party, in this case L'Oreal, has the capability to iterate fast on the inside of the organization, while the outside can rely on a known interface into the organization that is trusted and protected. And in general, what this points at is, is a concept that I've not named, but I've talked about here, and that is to rope in the platforms more and more to abdicate functionality into. And for those of you who are closer to software development, you've heard uh, the industry, and we're part of that too, we've heard, you've heard us talk about shifting left, moving um, certain functionality, whether or not it's from a code quality perspective to security and vulnerabilities, move all that burden closer to the earlier stages of product development, or in this case, software development. In building and development, let's move most of the technology left. In addition to that, though, um, we've seen that that generates sets of 
concerns with the development organizations. We're not trying to turn everyone into a security expert. We're not trying to turn everyone into an API expert. Some folks are dedicated mostly to business logic, and they should be. And the, the term that we've, um, we've worked on here is to focus on shifting down. In this case, shift the, the burden of some of these integration capabilities, some of these API capabilities further down into the platform so that you're freeing up your development resources to work on the things that truly create value, that are differentiated to you. And we think that you know, by, by making use of APIs and looking at them as products, utilizing a platform that helps you secure it and go faster, we get this nifty model where you can shift that burden further down while controlling cost in running that platform. So we've got yet one more term, not just shift left, but we also want to shift this functionality down into the platform. And we're happily, we'll, we happily do this for lots of customers and we happily do it for more. And just to sort of prime more ideas, um, there's sets of examples here of companies that have used APIs as their core strategic tenant to explore and open new revenue streams. And they're not just limited to pure tech companies, like financial services, everyone here probably knows Stripe, their biggest um, product is essentially an API. There are many of them right now, but the key thing is they've spent so much time um, developing and crafting the API itself um, and helping developers get into this ecosystem um, that they've now become the de facto standard in payments. Likewise, for other technology companies, Twilio is a very well-known source uh, for anything communication related. Um, if you ask a crowd of developers like who's really sent a text message using old school technology, the answer right now is like mostly none. Like everyone uses something like Twilio for it. Um, but the core there is it is a product, in this case it's the API, and your teams can depend on it because there is a contract. All the way through to not just capabilities that are technical in nature, but also data sharing. So think of your organization and what data can be made um, into value for partners or for other departments. Um, one very prominent example, AccuWeather, um, where they're exposing data for specific audiences, tailored for specific audiences, you know, in addition to the primary outlets that they have in separate uh, applications. Um, all the way through to, look, maybe you're not into data necessarily or into technology or payments, financial services, but looking at how you communicate with a community, how you communicate with a set of your end users. Um, Slack and Shopify are two prime examples where the baseline experience is delivered but extended using APIs as product. Or for Shopify where uh, buying experiences um, are tailored entirely for new sets of audiences. Again, possible using uh, APIs as products. So to improve virality of products or get um, the, the product information out there in more places. The key at the end of the day for us is that APIs as products provide us a way to um, deliver the capabilities in a far lower cost than was possible in the past, with far fewer people necessary to get, the, uh, get them done, um, and scale it up to multiple new revenue streams um, across the world. I'd say with that, um, we've got some time left over for questions, but I'll get to that only after saying, look, there's a trusted tester program that we're opening as part of Apogee, and this is for the various generative AI-based additions to, uh, to Apogee and Google that were uh, that we've been announcing. So again, one of it is cloud code and VS Code extensions, and there are sets of other enhancements um, around plugins that are being made available too. So if you are interested in that, please register in the Trusted Tester program. Thank you.